My name is Lonnie Brown. I'm retired. My last few years of employment were as a self-employed gardener, which I packed in at 65 and handed over to a lad who worked for me. Before that, I was a university lecturer in art history and other things. My list of jobs include steel worker, chemical worker, several factories in the south, HM Dockyard, brief spells as a civil servant, the building trade. I worked at the British Council in Old Man and as a teacher and librarian in the Sultan School in Old Man. On my return to England, I worked as a TEFL teacher and tech college lecturer before moving to Portsmouth University. I write songs, which I record, and back of the musicians on harmonica, I play guitar very badly. And I love walking and running and trying to keep fit, although I don't run as far as and, and as fast as I used to. But I'm spoiled because um, just around the corner the six miles of golden sand which stretches from Saltburn to the Teesmouth and Woodland. <sighs> I love writing, um, but there is an element, a little hint of hate there at times, which I'll come back to later. The book is called Restless Souls. It's a crime thriller with a, an academic sleuth as a protagonist, Ron I. Penny. During my research for my doctorate at Sussex University, I came across a copyright case in the British Library, Turner versus Robinson, 1860s it was, um, Robinson, a photographer, had actually tried to sell a, a stereoscopic image of the death of Chatterton by Henry Wallace. He was indicted and barred from selling it. The court case um, is fascinating, by the way. Um, I won't go into well on it, but um, in the court case, he pleaded that the image was not a photograph of the said painting. It was in fact a photograph of a model in Chatterton's blue garb in front of a scene painted by a scenic artist. Robinson lost his case. I was left fascinated by Tableau Vivant and started to read up on them. I didn't realise just how frequent they were and how popular for example, in the works of Cindy Sherman and so on, and in film. Um, I liked, too, the idea of the living picture um, and this notion of being arrested in time. Uh, arrested in time stayed with me for quite a while, and um, well, it still has, obviously. Um, I also thought, what about an image, a tableau? of a dead person, a living picture of a dead person. Chatterton, for example, or Ophelia. Um, two suicides, one a fact, the other a fiction. The name Ron I. Penny offers a clue. However, I'm not Ron I. Penny. Um, Penny's a hybrid, an amalgam of several characters. Um, there is an element of autofiction. He, he's a council house, council estate kid, who goes back to school and ends up as a university lecturer. He's streetwise in a sense, although I'm not sure how streetwise I really am. Um, he is puckish, and to a certain extent, I've been, I was going to say, accused of being so. Um, mischievous. He, like me, reads lots of crime fiction, Boss, Bosch, Spencer, Washinsky, um, Rebus, Morse, anything really. Um, 
Sayers um, and in terms of his character he's probably a more a Miss Marple than a Bosch, more remorse than a rebus. But he's it's more just operandi, even one that offers to um, create order out of chaos, which often academic sleuths do. He's a, a sort of oppositional character, and by oppositional, I probably mean critical. He doesn't suffer for, from syndrome, ODD, or some, some disorder. He, he, he thinks in opposition to a lot of things. He can see alternatives, the vault face of many things. Um, um, to me, I hope this doesn't sound corny, but writing is like a journey, an adventure. Um, recently, my seven-year-old granddaughter, Layla, asked me to take her for a walk and said to her, okay, she said, yeah. She got her backpack, she got a bottle of water, a banana, and then told her, Mom, we're going on an adventure. Okay, lead the way. Um, she did, and we wandered through the local woods in High Wycombe, and we literally wandered. She climbed a few trees, she loves climbing, and but it was very aimless. And then suddenly she said, I'll show you the spot where my mom left my coat and we had to go back. And there was this focus. I think writing was a bit like that. Um, you meander sometimes, and then you focus. Um, and I like to meander. I like to travel in straight lines or circles um, through landscapes, paintings, images. Um, I like Chinese painting. I like the idea of the lack of perspective sometimes. Um, the, the viewer can find themselves anywhere in the painting. You're not led through the painting, I suppose, I mean. You can position yourself on a bridge next to the water or wherever. Finally, I, I think writing, and this is a part of that love-hate thing, it brings to the surface memories. Some are unsettling, bad memories. Some are warm, um, memories that, that you'd forgotten about. They're probably buried in your pre-conscious. Um, some are uncanny, of course. Um, lodged there, waiting to come back. Sometimes it's therapeutic, and other times it rattles you in a way. I can't think of another way of putting it. Um, overall, I like telling stories. I like sharing ideas with people and hope they enjoy them. And at times I dread putting down that final full stop. Some years ago, uh, here we are, anecdote time. I'll try not to scratch my head. Um, I met a woman in company at a gallery opening in Liverpool and I just published The Art of Suicide and she asked me about writing a book. I'm probably the wrong person to ask, but her question really was, how do I start? And I asked her, well, you would, what, what, what do you want to write about? And she said, well, I once came across a deserted village in Spain while I was hitching and stayed there for six months. Well, I was hooked. The idea, I mean, I wanted to hear more. Um, how do I start? And I said, how about I came across a deserted village in Spain and stayed for six months. But then followed it with, just write, sit down and write. And I was about to say write every day, but I'm not convinced by that school of thought, that write every day school of thought. Um, but always keep a notebook and a pen or a pencil handy or your mobile phone, because if an idea comes in, uh, a thought, a, a sense of the wording, a concept, something, get it down. 
because it'll be forgotten and that isn't always an age thing. I believe the book will be available to order, at least at all outlets. It's also uploaded onto NetGallery, which means most libraries and booksellers have access to it. Read on.